Well, I'm rolling the dice on this one. I just have my phone with me. I haven't done one of these for a while, and I'm not actually technically doing this. However, our God has got a new beginnings. So take a deep breath. Yesterday's gone. Uh, today is his gift. So lift up your heart, and we'll learn how to find him in every moment of time, in every inch of space. And particularly today, I want to talk to you about one of those places. We have been looking together at the Garden of Eden, and I'll ask you a geographical question. This is leading to something about God and how we find him. If you remember the story in the Garden of Eden, we've talked about this in the second chapter. Uh, <laughs> it talks about how um, there are four headwaters that Papa, come out. Yes. He knew. <laughs> I was uh, just visited by a young friend who uh, will not appear on camera. Um, uh, in, in, in the story of, of Genesis, the Garden of Eden, you might remember that it is said that four headwaters uh, flow out of it, four rivers flow out of its headwaters. And one of them is the Tigris, one is the Euphrates, two other rivers that can't really be located. It's quite clear from this that Eden is not a place that anybody would be able to find on a map. It's not about that kind of geography. But pause and think for a moment. If rivers are flowing out of Eden into the rest of the world, what does that tell you about Eden? Well, one of the things that we know about water, uh, you might be able to hear there's some water behind me right now, is... Water always flows downhill. It's the way gravity works. And so what that means is, if a river is starting someplace, that place has to be uphill. And so one of the ideas that emerged about Eden over time is that it must have been in a high place in order for waters to flow down from it. And you'll find, for example, I think particularly in Ezekiel chapter 28, it talks about Eden being the garden of God, but also the mountain of God. And now there's a very important idea, spiritually, not just geographically, because in the ancient world, a mountain is a place where earth and heaven come together and intersect. And somehow the realm of the heaven meets the reality of the earth. And that's why in Scripture, very often, um, theophanies, visions, experiences of the presence of God would take place on a mountain, especially Mount Sinai, where Moses met with God, talked to God face to face, and received the Torah, the law, the Ten Commandments. And then, if you know the story of Ezekiel, when he runs away, he meets with God on a mountain, hears that still, small voice, Moses, when he's looking over to the promised land before he's taken to be with God, is on a mountain, Mount Pisgah. Um, maybe supremely, Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration when the reality of the spiritual, the presence of God, lights him up. The greatest talk that's ever been given is called the Sermon on the Mount. So over and over again in Scripture and elsewhere in Thoughts about the spiritual or religion mountains become very important because of this idea. So I thought this would be a good time for you and me to think about where is a place where you have met God, where you have experienced in a way that is somehow unique the presence of God or the reality of the spiritual. I am right now in Wyoming. And when I was a boy, eight years old, um, my family and my grandmother got into a station wagon in Rockford, Illinois, called the Rambler. Nobody would sell a car called a Rambler nowadays. Now we have cars with names like Infinity or Voyager or Explorer. But, you know, Rambler's a pretty humble thing. You just ramble around. But we drove a Rambler out. And having always lived where it was flat, it was an awe-inspiring thing to look in the distance and see what at first we thought were just clouds and then realized they were snow-covered mountains and they were the Grand Tetons and 
That's where I am right now. But then the mountaintop experiences are not just about physical beauty, although um, that can be a deep part of it. That can strike us deeply. I think about when I was on that trip and I would listen to my grandmother read scripture. She is one of those people, you don't hear this too much anymore, but she would pray in King James English. She had been raised that way. And when you would hear her pray, somehow you felt like you were in the presence of God. And now I think I get to pray with my grandchildren as I was once the grandchild who got to listen to my grandmother pray. And there is something holy and sacred about that. And I am in the place where somehow um, up there comes down here. And that's the idea of Eden. It was a place where human beings could live with God as God intended. And that's the great project. So my question for you today is, where do you experience that sense of God being present, of the reality of the spiritual? Could be a moment of deep gratitude, of deep meaning, of deep forgiveness, of grace coming to you in your inadequacy. I got to sit out on the grass today and listen to the laughter of a little child, not quite a year old, who is learning how to kind of play catch for the first time and how to make sounds that will one day become words and long after I am gone, uh, speak expressions of love from the heart. And I got to be there when those sounds were first being shaped by those tiny little lips. And that's a miracle. That's something that uh, the merely physical cannot explain. So today, in a moment of meaning, in a moment of beauty, in a moment of being able to serve somebody, in a moment of being forgiven by somebody, in a moment when you recognize that there is a significance to your life, that there is a purpose and a meaning that is beyond you, then you, one more time, are experiencing the reality of Eden, the presence of God on the mountain of God. So look for that today. When it comes, rejoice and be very, very glad. Who are you talking to? Oh, I'm talking to some of my best, best, bestest friends. Thanks. End of teaching. Beginning of your day with God. Thanks for joining us. My name is Tim. I'm a part of the team here at Become New. If you'd like to receive the emails that go along with each video, you can let us know at becomenew.com slash subscribe. Or if you'd like to receive a text alert whenever we release a new video, you can text the word become to the number 855-888-0444. If you have a prayer request, please let us know. You can text that request to that same number, 855-888-0444. There's a group of us who meet every day to pray over those requests. So we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.